people are, that are involved taking over countries, they're conquerors. They're crooks. And that's what Max is talking about. And now they're playing along like they don't know where the money went when it's public where it went. And th the so-called media is playing along. Uh, I mean, Ma Max, that's what's really frightening here. It's not just that the globalists are thieves. It's that just like Caligula or Hitler or anybody, they get so arrogant, they start going wild and always bring themselves down. But generally, they bring tens of millions down with them. You know, demo side in the 20th century, Max, killed more people than anything else. And it's an academic term, well known in academia, but not ever on the news. Of course, that's death by government. They killed 264 million people last century conservatively, Max, not counting warfare, not counting troop casualties. Uh, with this type of insanity at this level, what's coming next? Well, you know, just to be clear, what, again, the, the significance of the MF Global story and, and my experience as a stockbroker on Wall Street for many years, there was a barrier called segregated accounts that no lunatic who even was bent all the rules or broke all the rules, you would never go into a segregated customer account. It's heavily coded as such within the system and steal money. I mean, of all the crimes that we did, we did forgery all the time. We uh, did all kinds of uh, criminal behavior. I mean, every single stop, by definition, if you have your Series Seven's license, you are uh, a criminal. Uh, that's pretty much the, the business model of, of Wall Street. And I've told you some of the tricks that we used to use, uh, look back trades and other things we used to use to just print money all day long. But when you go into the segregated account and just steal from a customer like that, that that's that's a whole nother dimension to, to this history of, of bank collapse and criminality that we've seen when the Lehman Brothers collapsed and the big uh, TARP bailout that Hank Paulson engineered by threatening Congress with martial law. I mean, this is a new chapter. And it literally means that people's bank accounts and their brokerage accounts are not safe from the meddling fingers of uh, somebody who simply can reach in there and steal their money. And this is something that is uh, just a new chapter. So I, I anybody who had a an escape plan, and I noticed I just saw a story on Reuters, and I sent you the link. The number of people who are renouncing their U.S. citizenship in the last 12 months has skyrocketed. People are getting out of the U.S., they are renouncing their, their citizenship, and they're getting out of the United States. They don't trust the United States. Anyone with any means at all is leaving. The, the embassies are chock-a-block. They're stuffed with people trying to get to their exit interviews, because in order to renounce your citizenship, you have to go into the embassy or, uh, you know, an affiliated uh, institutional branch, and you have to go through an exit interview, and they then give you a certificate, which formally you have renounced your citizenship, and from that moment forward, the U.S. is uh, no longer has claim to you. And th But the number of people at embassies around the world who are waiting to do this, it, it, they can't handle the volume. Anyone with, who's really got anything to protect realizes that when, for example, they shut down Switzerland, why? Because those American banks wanted to get into the money laundering business. The American banks wanted to get into the secret bank account business. It's not that Switzerland was uh, closed down as a place to launder money or hide money. No, the United States, Wall Street banks wanted that business for themselves. Well, more they than that, Max, that as you know, they admit and I was just playing a clip earlier about this global government they want to get all the little guys money. Somebody who put 20 million in over 30 years, that sounds like a lot to most people. That's nothing to a globalist who's stolen tens of billions. They want to rob all the little guys. And you notice when they have gone after Swiss banks, it's always, you know, for two, three, five, ten million dollars. It's always just setting that precedent. But expanding on that, uh, Max, I'm looking at this. I ran into some of the family, and I mean, after I met them and talked to them, I went and looked them up. It really was them, of John Wayne's kids, some of John Wayne's children, you know, famous actor. And they were leaving the United States and selling everything they had. They had a ranch out uh, outside Austin. And they're, and, and they, well, that was two years ago. They've now left the United States to Costa Rica. 
And I asked them why, and they said, because the government's going to raise taxes and rob everybody, and it's changing the rules, and all the money's leaving. And I've talked to a lady who is worth over $3 billion, uh, owned one of the biggest defense contractor companies, one of the richest women in the world. I'm going to just leave it at that. I probably already said who it is with that information. And she left the country four years ago and said the United States will not exist, and you're going to be huge because everything you're saying is going to come true. And if you live, you're going to be the biggest thing in media out there. And I said, why? And she said, because you're 100% on target. And then I went and looked her up, and it was her. So, uh, but see, that's not like, oh, great, I've been right. It's horrible news, Max. The money is running like they're scared to death. What are they scared of? Well, you know, first of all, it's not about taxes or raising taxes. It's, it's more about what you see at the TSA now. We get reports all, all the time about TSA agents just stealing money and shaking people down, basically, and stealing property. And this is now becoming endemic throughout the U.S. in, in every tier, right up to the level of J.P. Morgan. You know, Jamie Dimon, who runs J.P. Morgan, stealing money from MF Global clients. And by the way, that number I just saw a report was raised out to another, raised again to 1.6 billion that they say that they can't find. You know, it's an, an incredible economy where. Walmart can tell you where a razor blade they sold three years ago is in a landfill somewhere with a some RFID tag. But uh, the major bank on Wall Street has misplaced $1.6 billion. I mean, that, that's an amazing admission in, in this day and age where everything is known by everyone uh, on the corporation uh, front and on Wall Street. But you've got right up from the top the Jamie Dimons of the world right down to the TSA agent. They simply now steal. Stealing has become legitimized. You know, I've said since I've been coming on your show that the closest antecedent to what's happening in the U.S. has got to be Argentina 2000, 2001. And there's a brilliant 12-part series on YouTube, a documentary, where they show the rich loading up um, trucks, uh, armored vehicles, and driving the money out of Buenos Aires, leaving the people with nothing but pots and pans. And if you look what's happening in Greece, this is exactly what just happened in Greece. Those people had $400 billion of their GDP stolen. They're sitting there with pots and pans now. They've got nothing. And it's not and even their debt again, and they admit the mega banks that did it, right. well, that, look, that, look, that, that, that infiltrated their government, right. are so now taking over the country and they're not gonna be able to vote anymore. But look, in Argentina, it was the, that was the template. The debt was from Citibank that, that, the, that the Argentinian government nationalized, and they passed a law. And, of course, it's all legal. This is what you always hear. It's completely legal. They nationalized all this foreign debt, and then they forced it onto the people in the terms of austerity. Same thing in Greece. Same thing in all of these situations where you find the IMF and the other Troika members meddling around, uh, involved in these massive scams. And in the U.S., of course, now with you see it happening with the TSA agent is a perfect uh, metaphor for what's happening throughout the entire economy, right up to the CEO's office of the biggest banks in America. They simply steal your money. That, that's not they're not doing some leveraged, um, you know, a derivatives trade as a way to move risk from one balance sheet to another as keeping liquidity or making a market. No, none of that is happening. They're just stealing. And, and this has gone to the point where people now are renouncing their U.S. citizenship in record numbers. Since they started tracking this, they've never, the number has never been higher. It's up two or 300 percent from last year. And the, 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 the lines and embassies around the world to renounce U.S. citizenship are growing every single day. How bad is it going to get? <laughs> well, I mean, in the U.S., the so U.S. is in a very interesting position because – it has been the chief beneficiary of these banking scandals for decades. And what I mean by that is that in the U.S., the price of energy and food is still, compared to other countries, very cheap. So uh, somebody making twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars a year can actually have a reasonable life because the, uh, you know, lifestyle even because the cost of of energy and food, as compared with these uh, other countries, is still. Uh, relatively is cheap because the U.S. has a reserve currency and because of so much of the U.S. economy is subsidized. You know, when the Republicans say they hate big government, that is a big joke because the economy of the U.S. is nothing but 
underwritten and subsidized by big government. The agriculture industry, you talked about the Mexican Coca-Cola being sweeter than the American Coca-Cola and the high fructose corn syrup. That's because corn is subsidized by big government to the point where the price of corn is so cheap uh, that they inject it into food into America. And 60% of every calorie you take in in the United States is from high frequency, high and high fructose corn syrup. Uh, because of the underwriting that comes from the government. They the just court. come in and lobby the corporations and the food makers to put it in there, basically giving it to them. And it's the same thing with fluoride in the water, everything. Right, Special so interests come in food, and make you do this. The price of food ends up being extraordinarily cheap. It, it's horrible for you, and you end up having to take supplements to survive. But the basic food at the fast food joint is incredibly cheap. Same thing for energy. Oil prices are not do not reflect the world market because America's it got wars going on all over the world. The biggest buyer of gasoline is the Pentagon. They spend two hundred thirty million dollars a day on gas to gas up all those vehicles for the Pentagon to go into all these countries and just kill shoot people indiscriminately because uh, for fun. Two hundred thirty million dollars a day they spend on gas. Okay, now to keep that flowing. They've got relationships with Saudi Arabia, which, of course, then you open up that whole Mideast uh, quandary and you see how the propaganda comes out and how we're targeting Iran and why Syria is bad, but Bahrain, Bahrain is good. And, you know, you end up in this incredible quandary. Well, let me raise that for you and then go to calls, Max, because uh, that's the next issue I wanted to raise uh, with you here today. Why? Is the establishment so arrogant that they're openly putting al-Qaeda in charge in the areas of Syria they've invaded, uh, al-Qaeda in charge of Libya, al-Qaeda now being put in everywhere, and the media admitting that the U.S. and Israel are using al-Qaeda terror groups? That was in NBC News a few nights ago. Like, it's a good thing. Like, like I've got to have a pot-bellied pervert grab my genitals and try to grope my children at the airport and go after my wife because terrorists are everywhere, Al-Qaeda, but Al-Qaeda openly works for the government. But then I'm bad to say 9-11 is an inside job. Well, the Al-Qaeda worked for the government, uh, you know, to fight the Russians in Afghanistan. Uh, bin Laden was on the, you know, working for the U.S., and then he wasn't working for the U.S.